Coming up on News Live at 6, a Marshall Street bar in trouble. Find out why one owner is calling for donations. Plus, an ADHD medication shortage is affecting students around campus. We'll take a look at why the drug Adderall is out of stock. And a visit from the president, but not the one that you're thinking of. All that and more News Live at 6 starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Just about a month ago, Syracuse was named Best Bar Town in America by Barstool, somehow. Welcome into News Live at 6, I'm Tegan Brown. And I'm Jake Morrell, in for Ashley Wenskowski. Tonight, the president of Barstool Sports, Dave Portnoy, is raising his glass for the first ever Best Bar Town Pub Crawl. That's where we find our Nicole Aponte. She's been following the crowd all day. Nicole, what do you got for us? Spirits were high at Coleman's Pub this afternoon. So excited. I I'm can't excited. Wait. I'm shocked we won, but I'm glad we won. Listen, Syracuse, it's not really on the map, but you know, to have somebody like Dave Portnoy to come out here, it's pretty awesome, you know. Barstool President Dave Portnoy kicked off the best bar town pub crawl. The city ranked number one in America on social media, and he's excited to see if it will live up to the title. Well, there's only a couple college bars, right? They definitely won the vote, and Coleman's is cool so far, so I guess we'll live and learn as we go. Portnoy met tons of fans and even drew a personal tattoo on one. He's happy so many are out today to celebrate. It's better than being hated, that's for sure. Like other places, maybe we wouldn't get the same reception, so it's been nice. And the fans, they're happy too to see their president, Dave Portnoy, in their favorite Syracuse spots. I'm here for El Perez. He's, he's one of my best friends. I just want to meet him for the first time. Nicole, thank you. And across campus, a retiring dean has just received the university's highest honor. SU just wrapped up its one anniversary awards at Hendricks Chapel. Diane Lydon Murphy, Diane Lydon Murphy, excuse me, received the Chancellor's Medal. Murphy is a class of 67 graduate and the dean of the Falk College. She announced her retirement at the end of this school year. And in a statement from last October announcing that departure, Chancellor Kent Siverud called Murphy a force of nature. And SU's Muslim Student Association hosted a variety of Eid events today. A prayer service and brunch was hosted in Hendricks Chapel this morning. And tomorrow at 4, students are invited to an Eid barbecue at the Muslim Student Life Center on East Genesee Street. Eid marks the end of the fasting month of Ramadan. The Asian Students in America and the AAPI Heritage Month Planning Committee is hosting Asia Night tonight. Performers will take over the Shine Underground at 7 o'clock, and the talent show tonight includes dancing, singing, and more. Tickets are $5, and it's open to all students with an SUID. A Marshall Street bar says it's in trouble. Hungry Chuck's owner Steve Theobald told Syracuse.com this week the bar needs financial support if it wants to survive the summer. Theobald is calling on the community to raise $150,000 to help the bar survive while students are out of town. And that's not all Theobald says he needs. The owner says an additional $400,000 could be used to renovate the bar to make it a popular destination for nightlife once again. And Syracuse University's club sports program now has a non-binary member. Citrus TV reporter Nicole LaFiandre details. Ice skating is difficult, especially when your team members are different from you. I quit because some of the girls on the team were actually kind of like really homophobic. Meet Ames, a member of Syracuse University's synchronized skating team. They are the only non-binary member on the team. I found people that I liked to skate with. It wasn't just about being competitive, it was about me liking the sport. They said skating can be a toxic place, especially for those questioning their identity. One of the girls would give lap dances to people in the locker rooms, like, to try to, like, turn on the gay people. Which is like, it's a, it's a little messed up, right? That all changed when Ames went to Syracuse to skate. I had always wanted to skate in college. Like, that was my goal. Literally one of the reasons I came to Syracuse was because it has a team. Ames also said they were led to believe what a non-binary person was. Instead, they created their own definition. Like, it, it's me, you know, like, I'm, I'm me. I'm not really, I don't want to be put into a box like that, you know? And now they take every chance they can get to express themselves. I feel like I just haven't really had the chance to explore my masculine side in skating. 
And it's like, you know, yeah, I'm comfortable wearing dresses, but it's also like a, am I really? Or <laughs> I wear the pants in my relationship with skating. <laughs> Nicole Lafiandra, Citrus TV News. Such an inspiring story, Nicole. Thank you. And from the ice rink to the heat outside, we're feeling oh, those yeah. summer temperatures <laughs> once again here in Syracuse. I'm not going to lie, I worked up a sweat walking here in the suit. Yeah, I was definitely enjoying the AC in my car before my very short walk into Citrus. She's got those upperclassmen privileges. <laughs> Speaking of that weather, Ronnie Perillo's in studio. What do you got, Ronnie? Well, Jake, you know, I saw you on the street when we were walking into the studio and we were both like, oh my gosh, it's so hot out here. Well, we were right because Syracuse today broke a record 88 degrees. We topped off at Hancock International Airport up in the north side of the city. The previous record, 87. That was back in 1954. So we have definitely uh, got those summer temperatures coming for us today here in the Salt City. Right now, that's ticked down just about one degree, maybe two to 86. Sunny skies right now, but that is not going to stick around. Tomorrow, it's going to be a rainy day, so rain on and off throughout the day, more so in the afternoon when you head out in the morning, things will be dry, starting off at around 60 degrees, moving through the 70s as the day goes on, so the unseasonably warm temps are going to stick with us here in central New York, but grab the raincoat and the umbrella for tomorrow. It's definitely going to be a rainy day. Now, as we look into Sunday and then early next week, temperatures will become more season seasonal. Our high around now, 57, 53 for your Sunday. Guys, back over to you. Ronnie, thank you. Adderall has been running out at pharmacies all across the country, and users are wondering why. Our reporter Tyler Oldano talked to a professor of supply chain to understand why. Since around October of last year, the supply of Adderall, a medication used to help treat ADHD, has been running low. Syracuse University's professor of supply chain management, Patrick Penfield, tells us why. Uh, the big issue is this, is that um, the demand has just really skyrocketed. So it's about 10 to 15% more than, uh, than we've seen. Um, part of it is due to telemedicine. So when the pandemic hit, uh, people were using uh, telemedicine more. And so people were, more people were getting diagnosed with ADHD, hence uh, prescriptions went up. Uh, the other reason is that we just can't manufacture enough. And part of it is due to some base ingredients that we get from India and China. For those who find themselves needing the medication but unable to acquire it, Paula Pazenti Perez, head of the Center for Disability Resources at Syracuse University, has some tips for students to help manage their symptoms. Working with their professor, I think, is going to be really important, really, that open communication, sharing um, with them the situation that's, that's going on. But if they, you know, if they're affiliated with CDR, they can certainly come. We can look at um, adding some additional academic supports, again, helping with the time management, uh, note-taking no-taking strategies, anything that externalizes the environment to create those those structures that are needed when executive functioning is, is um, impacted. To keep yourself informed regarding the medication supply issues and other pharmaceutical needs, go to www.fda.gov. Tyler Aldano, Citrus TV News. Tyler, thank you. The city of Syracuse is beginning to work on the East Brighton Avenue Bridge. Construction workers are finishing up last year's bridge deck replacement project, and work is expected to take about a week if that weather Ronnie told us about sticks around. But the work doesn't stop there. The city is also announcing an $8 million budget for street and sidewalk repairs. The proposed budget would cover 20 miles of roads and add 12 new miles of sidewalk. Chief Operating Officer for the city, Corey Driscoll Dunham, says the city worked with a snow removal company to identify the areas in need of repairs. And gliding on those new roads will be 850 new electric scooters. The city of Syracuse is once again partnering with VO to add more bikes and scooters this summer. The city initially added 400 bikes and scooters last year, and VO says they may even increase the fleet size to 1,000 in the coming months. Neil Burke, the director of special projects for the city, says riders have increased each year of the VO partnership. And a Syracuse daycare owner is teaching children with a unique method. Joshua Olatunde reads children's books on his YouTube channel called The Cool School with Mr. Josh. That's cool with a K. He got the idea after seeing a lack of child care services on Syracuse's south side. Olatunde chose to publish weekly videos on YouTube due to its accessibility and children's attachment to electronics. He hopes to gain more popularity so that his team can start reading longer form books. And coming up, how one Syracuse kid became a real superhero. 
Plus, Brandon Williams announces more town halls. Where in central New York he's headed after the break. Okay, so my typical day at the university is... So you're doing your regular? Yeah. Okay. My own peers have told me that every single one of them have told me now they want to be like me now. I want people to laugh about it, but I also want them to see what is a typical day this night at the university. One day I was on the tourney or going up to the South Campus one day, and then all of a sudden I was not expecting this, and then, and then all of a sudden, yes, that's our TV star tournament. Find her. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. You're watching Citrus TV News Live at 6 with Tegan Brown, Ashley Winskowski, and Alana Epstein. Now, your campus news leader continues. Welcome back to News Live at 6. Syracuse Congressman Brandon Williams is announcing new town halls with constituents. Here to discuss is Citrus TV political analyst Luke Radel. Luke, good evening. Hey guys, great to be here. The congressman is looking at some upcoming town halls being hosted in Onondaga County. We'll be seeing three town halls next month in the Syracuse area, but notably, none of the town halls announced today will be in the city of Syracuse. These are going to be his first town halls here in Onondaga County. Each of the events starts at 6.30 p.m. Now, Tegan and Jake, he's hosted three town halls so far in Oneida and Madison counties. The feedback from his constituents has been mixed. Take a look. I thought I was going to hear somebody that listened to his constituents, and I found somebody that lectured us and told us all the great things he does. Yeah. Did you vote for the congressman? I did vote for him, yes, sir. And are you proud of that vote tonight? Very proud, yes. yes. He, he, he made me more proud tonight than I came here. I thought his answers, they, his answers were very intelligent, very well thought out. So, Tegan and Jake, I find it interesting that two people can attend the same town hall event and yet come away with completely different ideas about the congressman. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, obviously, they were both sitting in that same room, both listening to Williams. Why did they get such different reactions and opinions of the congressman? Yeah, it wasn't just that night in Rome. I've talked to people outside of his events in Chittenango and Morrisville, and they've all kind of said the same things. He's a very smart guy. He knows a lot. He's a former Navy nuclear engineer. He has an MBA from Wharton School of Finance. Some people find that to be him proving himself to be knowledgeable about the issues at hand here in Congress, and others find him to be a little bit more arrogant sometimes, but usually those are the people who are predisposed to be against him anyway. So it'll be interesting to see how people in Onondaga County at these newly announced town halls are going to react to the congressman. And Luke, you know, a few months ago when he was elected, a lot of people called for him to have all of these town halls. It was sort of a controversy, but now he's started having them pretty frequently, almost bi-weekly. What do you think that does for him with his constituents? You know, it's been interesting watching as the scheduling kind of takes shape here as we see these being announced in batches of about four town halls. It's going to be interesting to see how his constituents respond, if he's able to maybe even change some of those minds of people like Carol who are opposed to the congressman. 
Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see. Luke Radel, thanks for joining us. Governor Hochul's plan to boost affordable housing in New York is off the table in state budget negotiations. Assembly Democrats have been told the housing plan will be put aside in order to break a budget impasse. Hochul and state lawmakers could still negotiate a housing deal outside of the budget process. An Onondaga County Sheriff's deputy is behind bars after inappropriate contact with a woman. The deputy was charged with fourth degree criminal mischief and official misconduct. Court papers say the deputy met a woman several times on duty where he kissed her and lifted her skirt. The woman called police to report minor damages that the deputy had caused and the sheriff's office says the deputy did not commit any violence or coercion. And most children dream about becoming a real superhero. Well, it became true for one Make-A-Wish kid, Marshall Sapello, who is living with congenial heart disease. He's starring in a project produced by American High. The project is called Marshall Man. The short movie is based on a comic book created by Marshall, and the movie will follow him as he gains superpowers and fights villains. The movie will premiere next Saturday at the Landmark Theater. Well, those summer-like temperatures about to leave our area. Any rain? Maybe you can get the car washed. I'll tell you the answer coming up. You're watching Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Welcome back to News Live at 6. Well, I had a little bit of a scare for Tegan. I felt bad, but she thought this was snow on this car back here. Thankfully, it's soap. There is nothing in the way of snow here in central New York. I think we've passed that mostly, but this is Syracuse, so you never know. But if you want to get your car washed uh, over the next few days, unfortunately, uh, today was probably the last good day to do it. Tomorrow with that rain, uh, it's really not going to make much sense to spend the money. But Sunday and Monday, you know, clouds in the area. So maybe not uh, too bad of a decision to uh, head out and get the car washed, get some of that pollen off because we are at a really high pollen count right now here in central New York. You could feel those allergens just in the air. Taking a look at your five-day forecast, uh, things tomorrow, temperatures staying unseasonably warm. will top off at around 76 degrees, but that's kind of going to get weighed out by the rain that's going to come into our area. And because those temperatures are so warm, it's going to mix with that cooler air moving in on Sunday, and it'll give us some thunderstorms and maybe some gusty winds. So you might want to tie down those outdoor plants or furniture, anything that's outside right now. But a warm day tomorrow, giving way to cooler temperatures on Sunday. And you can see that's going to stick with us through Monday. And then the sun does return on Tuesday and Wednesday. We're going to be around our average high temperature. So right now we're supposed to be in the mid 50s here in Syracuse. So while these temperatures do look cool, it's actually where we're supposed to be. We've just been getting a treat um, in April. We've seen seven days that have surpassed the 80 degree mark for the first time in recorded history here in central New York. So that's pretty good. Uh, but look at that, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, cool temperatures. But, you know, things are nice. And uh, speaking of things that are nice, Zach Letson, I know you've got some great updates for us over in sports. Oh, well, Ronnie, I'll tell you what, 76 degrees tomorrow. We're going to see if Syracuse men's and women's lacrosse can stay that hot. Our men's lacrosse beat reporter Peter Elliott joining us after the break from Charlottesville, previewing number 12, Cuse, number 3, Virginia. Plus, we had a thriller here on the Hill last night. Got to stick around until after the break to find out. It's more sports on the other side.
Jason, let's go see your room. What do you think? We kept it a little spare, so you can decorate it how you like. Dinner. Hello. No? Excellent. Soccer is fun. Yeah, I saw you guys out there. Where are the where are the where are the family? Where are the family? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were on my And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. Back with your look at sports. I'm Zach Letson. Well, number 12 Syracuse men's lacrosse, sizzling hot, ooh, like burning your hand on the stove. Coming off back-to-back -back wins against ranked teams Princeton, then North Carolina. But hey, next, number three Virginia on the docket in Charlottesville. Hey, that's where we got boots on the ground. Our Citrus TV beat reporter Peter Elliott live from the University of Virginia campus. Hey, Peter, thanks for joining us. And we know that there's a lot on the line, fighting for a spot in the NCAA tournament. Just how big are the stakes on Saturday? Uh, Zach, it's, it's massive. This is the biggest game of the season for this Syracuse men's lacrosse team. The number 12 Orange taking on the number 4 Virginia Cavaliers. Uh, and, and this is just going to be another big chapter in this historic rivalry between these two programs. But more than that, this could be the turning point for the revival of this Syracuse men's lacrosse program. At 8-6, and six, they've got a good chance of inclusion in this year's NCAA tournament. But a win over UVA could give them an impenetrable case in the NCAA tournament. And the fact that we're even talking about this Syracuse team making the NCAA tournament is pretty remarkable. At one point in the year, Syracuse was below 500. They had lost four straight games to ranked opponents. And now here we are. The Orange have won five of their last six games, their last two games over top 15 opponents, Princeton and UNC. This young Syracuse team has come a long way, and they could really make the NCAA tournament if they win tomorrow at Clockner Stadium against UVA. Talk about Syracuse maybe squeaking their way into the big dance. I mean, this season looked over for the Orange. 0-5 against ranked opponents, then back-to-back -back top 15 wins. Obviously, today a little different of a challenge, or tomorrow rather, facing the number three team in the nation. What does Syracuse need to do to pull off that shock or the biggest win in the Gary Gate era? Yeah, Zach, beating UVA, obviously easier said than done. Uh, the Cavaliers really are, fittingly, one of the top dogs in college lacrosse. They're 8-3, and three, but they really could be undefeated. Their three losses came by a combined four goals, and they have the number one scoring offense in college lacrosse. Uh, they score 18 goals a game, and they are led by a two-headed monster of Peyton Cormier and Kyler Schellenberger on attack. That's where defensive coordinator Dave Petromalo's defense really needs to step up, and especially goalie Will Mark, who's been so phenomenal in net all season long. This is where he can have the best game of his season against the UVA offense that is so potent. But I think if the Orange can score early and hold UVA off, especially on these scoring runs they like to make, I think the Orange have a really good chance of taking this one. Peter, it should be a real, real good one. Thanks so much for stopping by, for joining us. That's a 2 o'clock opening face-off, Clockner Stadium. Peter will have all your updates on his Twitter at P. Elliott Sports tomorrow. Well, hey, there was plenty of other important lacrosse taking place 
right here on the Hill. Number one Syracuse women's lacrosse in the midst of a historical season. 15 and 0. One last regular season game last night and the Orange were put to the test. A 2021 National Championship game rematch with number five Boston College over at SU Soccer Stadium. What a game that this was. Plenty of stakes as you get a look at how this one went down. The winner, ACC regular season champions and it was a crowd worthy of a top five showdown. Megan Carney getting it started for the Orange who got out to a great start in this game. A 5-1 lead for Cuse. Meg Magic getting her 49th of the season. 11 to 6 at halftime right out of the gate in the second half. Olivia Adamson with the behind the back goal. Now later on Syracuse by four in the third. Megan Tyrell going for history and she's got it. She now stands alone. Point number 397. That is the most in Syracuse program history, but the Eagles would not go away. We got a tie ball game under three minutes left. Thanks to Cassidy Weeks 16 16 dying seconds going for the win and McKenna Davis does just that. Are you kidding me? Boston College with the shocker. 17 16 orange heartbreak. Syracuse head coach Kayla Trainer knows her team was right there. It's an amazing group of girls that are so focused and disciplined and want to succeed and want to win. And it's unfortunate the way the game ended. We've got a lot of offensive players that can score and make big plays. Unfortunately, I think our turnovers in the third quarter were killers. We had a lot of penalties, which I thought were you know, really close, but we didn't lose that game because of calls, but they definitely played a factor. I think this, this team's going to go far and, and they're determined and we're going to get it right. Well, that perfect season has come to an end. Now trainers team has to regroup with its first ACC tournament game on Wednesday. Well, Syracuse football head coach Dino Babers called tonight an opportunity for his team to put all their hard work on display for the first time since that pinstripe bull loss. You remember that four days after Christmas against Minnesota, Orange fans get their first glimpse at the gridiron and a glimpse at the 2023 Syracuse football team. Tonight is the annual spring game inside the dome. And remember, starting quarterback Garrett Schrader, he underwent an arm procedure that keeps him out all spring. So expect Carlos Del Rio Wilson and Justin Lamson to take over behind center. Hey guys, right after you're done watching us on live at six, seven o'clock, we got kickoff. You know, I might just have to go there, Zach. Zach, <laughs> thank you so much. When we come back, one last look at your wake-up weather. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. I spy something beginning with S. Snow? No. Snow-covered trees? Nothing to do with snow. Head outside to discover incredible animals <laughs> and beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. Wow. So grab your loved ones. Don't even and explore a world of possibilities come on this way visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you welcome to an excellent episode of live from studio b All right, let's take one last look at your wake up weather as you step out the door tomorrow. Low 60s. Rain won't arrive quite yet, but as we get towards the afternoon, thunderstorms and wind will come into the area. Definitely a, jay, a day, excuse me, for the raincoat and umbrella. Tegan and Jake, back over to you. Ronnie, thank you. Fans of Ted Lasso who were here on the hill in the mid 2000s may have seen a familiar face recently. Maximilian Ozinski, who plays Zava on the Apple, am I saying that right? You yeah, watch you it. Got. Zava on Apple TV Plus Comedy is an SU alum. Ozinski got his Bachelor of Fine Arts from Syracuse in 2006. The flamboyant character Zava is proving to be Osinski's breakout role, but he hasn't totally come out of nowhere. Osinski has been credited on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. 
and The Walking Dead Worlds Beyond. And you know, Tegan, I'm a huge fan of Ted Lasso. I honestly okay. think he might be, Ted Lasso might be my favorite show character of all Whoa. time. And I want him coaching Citrus TV when we take on Z and the Watson Cup. It would be 100-0. Z and the Watson Cup? But it might be 100-0 either way. And that's all the time we have for you today on Citrus TV News. For more of the latest, follow us on Citrus TV News on Twitter. You can check out our website too. I'm Tegan Brown. And I'm Jake Morrell. Have a great night, Syracuse. We'll see you on the field, Z89.